and welcome to our weekly worship online. My name is Elizabeth Harris and I'm one of the ministers here in the Falmouth and Gwenap Methodist circuit. I pray as we begin our worship today. Lord God, creator of all that is, we come before you in awe. We look at your world of majesty and wonder and we praise you. Be with us in our worship, we pray. In the name of Jesus, your precious Son. Amen. We're thinking about this wonderful world of creation that we have all around us. God's fingerprints over everything. We're currently in Bible Month when people right across the country are having a focus on the book of Genesis. And so we sing and praise to God about his creation. from the beginning of Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. 
God saw that the light was good and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning the first day. And God said, let there be a vault between the waters to separate water from water. So God made the vault and separated the water under the vault from the water above it. And it was so. God called the vault sky and there was evening and there was morning the second day. God said, let the water under the sky be gathered to one place, and let the dry ground appear. And it was so. God called the dry ground land, and the gathered waters he called seas, and God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the land produce vegetation seed-bearing plants and trees on the land that bear fruit with seed in it, according to their various kinds. And it was so, the land produced vegetation, plants bearing seed according to their kinds, and trees bearing fruit with seed in it, according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the vault of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them serve as signs to mark sacred times and days and years, and let them be lights in the vault of the sky to give light to the earth. And it was so. God made two great lights, the greater light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night. He also made the stars. God set them in the vault of the sky to give light on the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate light from darkness. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, let the water teem with living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the vault of the sky. So God created the great creatures of the sea and every living thing with which the water teems and that moves about in it according to their kinds and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and increase in number and fill the water in the seas and let the birds increase on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the land produce living creatures according to their kinds, the livestock, the creatures that move along the ground, and the wild animals, each according to its kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals according to their kinds, the livestock according to their kinds, and all the creatures that move along the ground according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created humankind in his own image. In the image of God he created them. Male and female he created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. 
Then God said, I give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food. And to all the beasts of the earth and all the birds in the sky and all the creatures that move along the ground, everything that has the breath of life in it, I give every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw all that he had made, and it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. And so the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array. By the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. And on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. Then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. Currently, we have a focus on Bible Month. So we read through that lovely passage from the beginning of Genesis, right at the beginning of our Bibles. We hear the story of creation, one of several stories of creation in Scripture, actually. But this one is very familiar to us, isn't it? It's told in that lovely repeating poetic pattern that inspires us with its words. God said, let there be light, and there was light. And there was morning and evening, the first day. And that pattern repeats throughout the reading. During Bible Month, Methodist churches right across the land all study the same passages. So in our Sunday services, in our Bible studies, in our prayer time, and in our individual time when we're looking at the monthly readings around Genesis, it encourages us to dive deeper into that particular book of the Bible. So I encourage you, engage with it. There are some great stories in the book of Genesis, some great passages to ask us to question that invite us to look at the beautiful world around us, to see its wonder, its beauty, its awe, to see something of God's fingerprints all over creation, including us, and to be thankful for that. Genesis, as far as we know, was written down in its current form around the fifth century, before Jesus was born. But the stories it tells are much older. They'd been told through generation upon generation, through the oral tradition, storytelling, for a long time before that. They were ancient stories gathered together and written down. And they're passed on and shared with us. It imaginatively, imaginatively <laughs> paints a great picture of the formation of everything we see. It poetically describes creation. Genesis itself goes on, of course, to explore all kinds of things. It asks very reasonably, why is there wickedness in our world? Why is there sin? Why is there evil? Why have things gone wrong? How did humans come to know good and evil? Why do we act in the ways that we do? How can we experience pain and jealousy and shame? The chapters prompt us to really think about who we are and our place in the world. And it really asks us to consider our own responsibilities around 
our choices and the consequences that come from our actions or inactions. Now, sometimes you will know this, sometimes people get into great arguments about that, great debates about science, about evolution, about the way things are and the way things came to be. It's a bit of a red herring. Don't get caught up in that stuff. We're warned about it several times in scripture. And here's a, here's a good example. In the book of Titus, it says, avoid stupid controversies and genealogies and dissensions and quarrels about the law for they are unprofitable and worthless <laughs> don't get caught up in those arguments but instead we people of faith are really encouraged to see the big picture to look at this world from god's perspective the story of God's salvation, the story of how Creator God looked upon the cracks, the brokenness of the world and engaged with us, engaged with the world, came down. We live in an amazing world that inspires us with awe and wonder. And we know and frequently say that we ourselves are made in God's image. Isn't that marvellous? We are made in the image of God. But we switch on the news, we look around us and we see where things have gone wrong. We can see oppression, injustice, poverty, greed, pain, selfishness the unfair things of the world. But the good news of the gospel, revealed right throughout scripture actually, and particularly in the life and death and resurrection of Jesus our Saviour, we see there reveals that God has made a way for us. There is salvation is a way for us to be healed and restored so we're invited to come to him to know his forgiveness his mercy we're invited to come and experience that new abundant life that Jesus himself offers and to be planted in God's kingdom to grow and to flourish in the kingdom of God. Friends, you and I, we are indeed made in God's image. We are his beloved creation. We're children of the creator. We are children of the king. And God longs for us to come into his presence to be restored along with the whole of creation. The invitation is open. Come.
And now a reading from John's Gospel, chapter 7, verse 37. On the last and greatest day of the festival, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. Recently, some of us here in Cornwall travelled to the Royal Cornwall Showground in Wadebridge to take part in the District Wellspring event, which is a gathering of Methodist people from right across Cornwall. When we were there for that day out, we had fun, we met people that we've known from before, people from other churches and chapels. We explored some of the activities, some of the stands that were there. We added praise to the great well installation and art installation, which actually was made here in our own circuit, in the Falmouth and Gwenap circuit. There were some old notice board dividers in Mornin Smith Chapel. And when that was being cleared out some months ago, we saved those notice boards dividers and they were built into a giant well and a number of friends from across the circuit helped me to put that together, to restore it, to paint it, to build it. Thank you to those who came along with skills, Paul with your hammer and drills and Bettina and Linda and Jill and John and others with paintbrushes. We made a big well we took it on that day to the Wellspring event as a focus for people to come to write prayers on mirrored discs like water bubbles and to add them to the well. On that day we shared in worship led by the visit visiting Fijian choir who are excellent and the Truro Methodist Church worship band led us in our singing and Deacon Eunice Atwood preached about coming to Jesus, the wellspring of living water. We had an opportunity after that to receive a water blessing. There were buckets of water and you could be splashed or sprinkled, blessed as you came to the living water. And then we finished the day with a lovely cream tea it was a really good day and we are to be encouraged our great creator god he's not finished with us his fingerprints are all over us he made us in his own image and he offers us new and abundant life in jesus and we live that life in his strength he fills us and refreshes us with living water so that our own thirst is quenched, we are soaked through and we overflow, sharing that blessing, that love of God with others. His provision, his blessing never ends. We're going to watch a short film about that event.
let us pray. Creator God, we praise and worship you today. We thank you for your wonderful creation and for making us in your own image. You invite us to know you, the source of the water of life. You offer us living water so that we may never be thirsty. You fill us to overflowing so that your living water might flow out from us. We confess that often we sin against you and against others. Forgive us, we pray. Bless those whom we love and care about, those who are unwell or bereaved, those who are lonely, those who are struggling. Give us a love like yours that we may reach out to others in your name, learning to become more like Jesus as we grow in our faith. Always for your glory we pray in the name of Jesus, our Saviour. Amen. Now the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Are you thirsty? Are you empty? Come and drink these living water. Tired and broken, peace unspoken, rest beside these living
Thank you, friends, for sharing worship today. As you look around, as you see this wonderful creation of God, let's remember that we are part of it, made in his image. He invites us to himself. He fills us and overflows us with his living water. We are truly blessed. A blessing for the week ahead. Lord God, fill us with your living water. Let us overflow so that others around us know your blessings this day and always. Amen. Christ, he is alive.